All right, this is going to be my quick-ish tutorial about importing Super Mario 64 models into Blender and then exporting them out for the decomp version. So basically what you want to do is have the latest Blender and download Fast64 plugin. The link for that will be in the description. Right, so basically you want a new file if you don't know already it's file new and you want a general file it'll basically do a fresh file with this now what i want you to do is hit the a button hold the a key a selects all double a will deselect all but for now let's select all and hit the delete button to clear everything up now i want you to hit the n key and that'll bring up this this menu on the side and head to the fast 64 tab this is all the info all the tools you need the import rom you just point it towards your uh, your expanded rom i'm not going to tell you where to get it from but you'll need that and then the decomp file your decomp folder you set to where your decomp has been extracted to in my case it's over here I won't no I'll have a link to the description of the Super Mario 64 decomp for you to download and then zip to wherever you want all right so I'm gonna start I'm gonna run you through getting the Goomba or changing the Goomba so settings are fine as it is maybe I find ticking disable scrolling textures works or, or helps with some stuff so get that off next I want you to scroll down to import geo layout so this is how you import stuff into the blender interface uh, to, you'll need a start address and level that you are importing from. So in our case, I'll get Goomba from Bob on Battlefield. So what you're going to need to do is open up this site. I will have another link in the description for it. So basically, to get Goomba. In my case, I will scroll down to level six, Bob on Battlefield, Bob on Battlefield. And then down here is the Goomba. What you need to do is you need to take this number, so the level, the, the bank, take that number, chuck it into your calculator, add this number so the like the, the model ID take that add these two together and you get this number and now take that number copy it and then take it into a decimal to hex converter I'll add a link to this one in the description as well so you paste that hit convert and you'll get this hex number so what you need is copy that number back into blender paste that key change the level to of on battlefield which is here and then import geo layout and bam we've got our goomba so do note that I am using the right click for select just as it's I got used to it in old versions of Blender so if you're still using left click like using left click by default that's fine it's just how the, the way I use it so here is your Goomba file you'll want to go up to the viewport shading and click this one this will show you more about what it will look like in game here is your Goomba and its skeleton. What I'll get you to do, I'll, I'll set up materials first. So select your Goomba, 
head over here and down to the materials tab so it currently has one import as default it is just a basic shaded solid and, and it, once imported in game it'll be purely white with appropriate shadows and stuff but basically what I'm going to do is I want to change it to shaded texture scroll down to texture properties open up and I'm going to open up the Goomba face or whichever texture you would like to replace it with so open image and you get it textured what you'll want to do is set this the what's it called the format into RGBA 16 and then clamp both of these what it does it basically the game will register anything outside of the texture as the whatever color is happened to be outside of the texture so in this case it would be the brown you can check that out by going up to the UV editing tab go into the Goomba face and you can see that's what the texture looks like I hit A to select all of and see that's how it is textured the feet down here outside of the texture so basically whatever's the edge will continue on forever so the feet are in the outside area and they'll be forever brown so let's head back to the modeling of the layout tab so there we got the Goomba the Goomba also has oops hit shift C to kind of like reset the view and you can zoom in a bit better Right, so the Goomba also needs one more texture. So go down to click and click on Create Fast 3D Material. Or create a new one. Let's rename this to Face. Let's rename this to Body. Now the body, which is this, oh, let's set this to Wireframe. Okay, so. In game, the Goomba's body isn't actually a isn't actually geometry. It is a little billboard which always faces the camera. So in this case, it is this. It does get scaled up in game, so it, it just currently looks small. So for the body, let's go to shaded solid and change it to a, an unlit texture cutout. Scroll down to texture properties, open it up, and in the Goomba's case, you want the body. So I'll open that up, set this material to RGBA 16, clamp it up, and now we can see that it is textured and see through. Also, do note, uh, I haven't mentioned it yet, but hitting tab will change the mode that you are in. Basically, by default, it's object mode where you can select objects and different things. By selecting geometry and hitting tab, it goes into edit mode where you can start using textures or actually manipulating geometry. So, anyway, that's textured. And again, that'll get scaled up in game so you don't have to worry about the size of it. So now we have our Goomba all textured up. Next step is about the skeleton. So the skeleton gets imported in a weirdly oriented kind of way. I don't know why, it's just the way everything is. You just need to account for it okay so the bones themselves aren't actually joined up in a traditional way they're just basically at the joints where they rotate so select the skeleton and head over to this tab it's basically the skeleton properties 
let's go up here and go into pose mode where we can grab stuff and move it around so basically the skeletons are run into two layers first layer is the actual bones that control the movement of whatever it's attached to the second layer is a bunch of extra stuff that the game needs like it's, there's a bone here that controls the scale there's one that controls the shadow there's a billboard which I believe is in relation to the, the body. In most cases we only need to deal with the first layer. Okay, so let's orient this up properly first. So I'm going to select right I'll select here a few times until we get the root selected. So I'm going to hit R, which is for rotate. Y, which is which will lock it to the Y axis. And I'm going to hit 90 for 90 degrees and then hit minus so it goes backwards 90 degrees. So that's lined him up just fine that way. Next, I'm going to right click here, or select here. I'm going to hit G, which is for grab, and I'm going to see that it is actually the foot because these will orient. Like in this case, this is the foot and that's like the hip. You'll find the same similar stuff in like Mario where his knee and lower leg are two separate, but you, you don't want to control the hip. You only want to rotate the actual foot. So I'm going to undo moving that. I'm going to again hit R and Y and negative 90 to get it down to where it should belong. I'm going to do the same on the other foot, so make sure I've got the right one. R, Y, negative 90. So now we've got it oriented nicely. So in order to map this or like work with this a bit better, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down to Armature Tools. I'm going to apply this as Rest Pose. What that's going to do is that's going to set that as the default for the skeleton. Why you need to do that is because if you don't set this up, set this up, and like create like say that's like a hat for him outside, and then try to rig it later, it won't be rigging it in the correct spot. And like let's reset this, it'll go back down. The hat will go somewhere else. So let's just look at that for now. So he's reset. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to delete the body, add a new one, and then add like geometry eyebrows, and then we'll import it into game. So we're going to right click on, oops, we're going to head back into object mode, select the object, tab to go into edit mode, and then basically I'm going to hit L to select this root chunk, hit delete, delete the vertices, oops, deselect everything, try that again, hit L to select, delete vertices, now it's gone. Alright, um, crash course on camera controls, hit 1 on the numpad to go to the front view, 3 the side view, 7 the top view, 5 to swap between autographic and perspective, dot or full stop or delete on the numpad will zoom to selection and in the case of this if you hit forward slash it will isolate whatever your selection is so just see the selection of the geometry and the skeleton and everything else outside of it gets hidden so I'm going to hop back into here. Now you might notice that while I'm hitting 1 to do the front view and 3 to do the side view it's not doing it right that's just because again the skeleton was oriented weird but at least we can still work with this. Also as a note if you hit control 1 3, 7, etc. It'll do the opposite. So 7 top, 
control seven bottom anyway so let's just different view so what i'm going to do is hop into edit view again so i'm going to hit shift a i'm going to create a cylinder i'm going to go into these settings change the vertices down to let's say six and hit enter to solidify that what i'm going to do is i'm going to go up here change it to face select select the top face hit delete faces and that gets rid of the top just for some ge geometry clearing i'm going to head over to wireframe mode select or oh, change it to vertices hit l to select just that now we're going to hit s to scale it down i think that looks about right make sure box is selected and i'm going to select the top oh, deselect that make sure this is selected well, this is toggled because if it's not toggled it'll only you'll only be able to select what's at the front so if i do this for instance see the back isn't selected so anyway to x-ray select the top g to grab the selection hit z to lock it to the z-axis and drop it down what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit L to select the feet. Hit H to hide them. If you want to unhide stuff, you just hit Alt H and it'll bring bring anything you've hidden back. H hide. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to hit E for extrude. Now I'm going to hit Z to lock it to Z. And Okay, decent. Let's try that again. Okay, so that's selected. Hit E to extrude. Hit Escape to cancel selection. While that stuff's still selected, hit G. Hit Z, which will lock it to Z. Bring it down a bit. Hit S to shrink it. Alt to scale it. Bring it in a little. I might grab it and move it up a little. I'm going to hit E again escape and then grab the z move it down i'm going to hit alt m this is the merge options so at this point i'm going to hit at center what i'll do is it will merge all these vertices into one single point in the center of the area so now i'm going to grab that hit z again and move it up a little so now we have a little Body for it, so I'm going to hit Alt H to unhide the feet. Continue, undo that to hide them again. Grab these, G, Z, and move it up a little. Now Alt H, and that looks a bit more reasonable. So now we have Goomba with a body. Now the body currently is only textured well, it's textured to the only texture here i'm going to assign body to those bits so hit assign and it's going to apply that now it's going to look a bit, look a bit weird because it's still the cutout but what we're going to do is i'm going to change this to a shaded solid which gets rid of the, the texture i'm going to change go down here to change the light color to no. to the the Goomba kind of yellowy orange. That'll probably do the job. Alright, so now we have the Goomba with a body. And hit tab to hop out and there we go. So 
while the object is selected, you might notice that this is this bit's pretty faceted. But it's when stuff gets first created, it has sharp edges. So just hit, head over to object, shade smooth. So that fixes that up. That's all good now. I'm gonna go back into the oops. Oh, right view tab and I'm going to hit control shift a and create a plane so that's what that's done that has created a plane at the center where the 3d cursor is 3d cursor you can move around by clicking the other the, the, the mouse button opposite the mouse select and to reset that back to origin shift C so that's there. All right, so while we're in this critter, I'm going to hit R to rotate this, but I'm going to lock it to Y and hit negative 90 to rotate it that way. Let's head back to the front view. Go to keyboard shading to change it to Y frame. I'm going to scale this down. Move it up here to approximately where the eyebrow was. I'm going to select these two points. Hit Alt M to collapse at the center. And grab these two individually. S to scale, Z for the Z axis, and shrink that down. I'm going to move that over here, maybe rotate a little. Now, what I'm going to do with this now is hit. E to extrude it out, E to extrude it out again, rotate, scale, E again, scale, rotate, E, and there, and then we're going to hit Alt M to merge them at the center again. And now we have an approximate eyebrow. We'll probably reduce the geometry a bit more but this is just for an example so now I'm going to go to the side view select that chunk hit G to grab it and I'm going to move it over here to the front maybe rotate it a little so now we have kind of like an eyebrow oops okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this. So hit Shift D to duplicate. So now that's duplicated it. To flip it in this way, I'm going to hit S, scale Y. So it's locked to the Y, and then I'm going to hit negative one to flip it along the Y. I'm going to grab it, move it down here. If I head back up to this, see that. There is some eyebrows. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new fast 60 a fast material. Just call that eyebrow. Keep it as a shaded solid. Change the light color to black. Now in here, I'm going to select these two and apply it to the eyebrow material. And now they're black. You might notice that this one is currently looking see-through. That's because usually when you scale along the neg negative one, it kind of reverses the normal. So in this case, it's facing the opposite way. What you'll need to do is select that, hit L, go mesh, normal, flip normal. Now it's been flipped around. All right, I'm going to just Grab these two using L and just hit G to move it and just orange it up here. It just looks more like the eyebrows. And whoops, I'll just move this a bit further back there. So there we go. So now we have our Goomba. The next step is I'll quickly teach you about the switches. So if I hop out of tab there, I'll hop out of edit mode and go back to the 
pose mode of the skeleton. In the skeleton, back over here with the, the utility stuff. Where is it over here? You want to go to the bone properties. I think right click here a few times. I think it is the other side. Let's go back here. Okay, so here there will be a bone called a switch. You want to select that. Add a switch option and change the switch option to a material override. Now the material, oh, let's add the material that, oh, set it to specific, add the material as the face material. So what will happen is this face material will be able to get replaced by whatever you put here. Now for the sake, so let's hop out, go to object mode, select the Goomba again, go back to here. And create another fast six, fast thirty four material. Change it to shaded texture. And I want you to open up in this case the blink. This is the eyes closed of the Goomba. So select that. Clamp S, clamp T, format sixteen or RGBA sixteen. Let's call it blink. So let's hop back into the skeleton. Switch is still selected, and we want to change this material to blink. So what will happen is the, the game will know that this face can be swapped to blink, and it will, like the, the program will automatically do it itself because it's all inbuilt in the, the animations and the, the skeleton outside of this. All right, so. Let's go back to object mode and check this Goomba. So I think it's looking pretty good so far, but we're not quite ready for the export up here quite yet. So let's hit tab to go back into edit mode, deselect everything, go down to properties. You will see this list of vertex groups. That's basically each group is the name of one of the bones and you assign vertexes or vertices to these in order for them to be moved. Like for instance when this was here, when I grab the foot, I grab the foot, and I grab that, etc. the head. So as you can see now that the eyebrows do not move with the head. If I grab that, it will the the body here will not move with the rest. So I'm going to have to fix that because on the export, every vertice vertices needs to be assigned to a bone. It will it, it won't export if that's if something isn't assigned to something. So let's hop back into object mode, select that, and go into edit mode. So as you'll see. So there's the root, the display list, which was the root there. Offset 1 is the head. Offset 2 is the foot. Offset 3 is the other foot. So if I click root and click select, it should select all the vertices attached to that bone. In this case, there is nothing selected to this bone. Display list, select, nothing down here. What we want is offset 1, which is the head. So if I hit select, see that that lights up. That 002 which is the foot, hit select, that lights up and etc. So what we want to do, so we know this one is the head, let's deselect that, select the eyebrows and click assign. That'll assign those 100% to that group. So if I hit if I deselect everything again, 
and then go to select, just select all that lot. And I think in this case we might want to add the body to that group as well. So let's, oops, oh, let's select that anyway and assign it. So that's all assigned. So now if I hop out to object mode, go to the skeleton, pose mode, if I grab this, that works, and more importantly, this works now. All right, so that's pretty much a quick edit. So let's hop out into object mode and get sorted on actually exporting out. So you only need to worry the export mode, you want to set to C. That's only what you need for the decomp. If you're changing textures or doing anything, you want to set save textures as PNGs and, leave, and that's it. Down here, you, the export. You can optionally export it to its own separate folder. But in this case, since you're already working with the decomp anyway, as you set up here, Next, you want the name and the group name of the actor. In this case, it is our Goomba. And I know that the group name is common zero. To find this out, what you need to do is open up your folder, decomp, and you need the actors folder. So the actors folder is all of the individual actors. And then these are the group definitions. Up here, we now our Goomba is there. There's his textures, his animations, and the geo and model. That's the they're the important ones. If you want to find which group an actor belongs to, you need to hop into the common or whatever headers, so dot h. In this case, I'll open up common. And basically, you'll see a list of stuff. So, amp, blue coin switch, bob -omb, et cetera. So you find what, you've got to go through them all and find the one you're after. I know for a fact that Goomba is here. Down, so he is in the common H. And then that's where you put that. So common zero, Goomba. Now if all that's set up, you should be able to hit export armature geo layout. Make sure the skeleton is selected, then hit that button. And it was a success. Actually, I do need to reset the skeleton, sorry, because it needs to be oriented the other way. So you'll need to hop into the skeleton pose mode. Find the root. Rotate Y. 90 so back to where it was and do the same with the feet so rotate y 90 so that's how it's oriented and then apply rest pose so now the goomba is all solid let's go to object select the skeleton and export armature geo layout so i'm going to cut here and open up the game build it and show you Goomba in game. All right, so here is the Goombas in game. So as you can see, they have a full body and their silly eyebrows. Everything works as it's supposed to, and that's pretty much it. You'll need to experiment if you want anything more, and that's about it.